everything in chapter three to this point has given us an idea of different attributes of our function based on the derivative and second derivative. So in this video, I'm going to give you those attributes. I'm going to give you the asymptotes, the intervals of increase, decrease, the min, the max, et cetera. And we're going to sketch the graph based on those attributes. In our next video, 3.6.2, I'm actually going to give you the function and we're going to do the work to find the attributes first and then sketch a graph of the function. Okay, let's take a look at our first practice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use one color for entering anything for the attributes that I'm given. For instance, I have an x-intercept at negative 3, 0, and 1, 0, and a y-intercept at 0, 1. And so when I actually graph the function, I'm just going to use a different color just to, so that we're clear. Uh, the domain is everything except for plus or minus 2, and typically when you have that, you'll find that you have a vertical asymptote at that point. So notice I'm going to have a vertical asymptote here and here. And then it says horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So I want to make sure we're clear about the difference between a horizontal or vertical asymptote. When you have a vertical asymptote like these two, nothing should ever cross a vertical asymptote. Whereas when you have a horizontal asymptote, notice we can see that obviously my graph is going to cross that. Um, and so the only time that we're worried about a horizontal asymptote is as you approach infinity. So as I go in this direction and in this direction, we're going to find that nothing's going to cross the asymptote as I approach positive and negative infinity. All right, so now let's see, increasing. Our function doesn't increase at all. So you might be confused because you're thinking, well, hold on, how am I going to have a graph that's going to connect those points? But remember what we said, we're not going to have a graph that crosses over this horizontal asymptote. So we know it's decreasing everywhere. And I'm going to go ahead and just check these off. I should have done that as I was going. So we know it doesn't increase and it's always decreasing. There's no min and there's no max. And then we'll look at concavity. So we have 0, 1, which is a point of, uh, point of inflection. So it's going to change concavity at that point. So now we're going to start actually graphing our function. So let's choose blue. So from negative infinity to negative 2. So I'm just going to go left to right on my graph negative infinity to negative 2, it's concave down the entire way and also decreasing. So that means, again, I'm looking at towards negative infinity. I know I'm going to get close to this horizontal asymptote but never touch it. So my graph's going to go through this point and it's going to be decreasing and concave down. So that is an accurate re representation of what's happening from negative infinity to negative 2. Now let's focus on negative 2 to positive 2. So from negative 2 to 0, it's concave up. And from 0 to 2, it's concave down. And obviously, this is that point of inflection where it changes. And again, it's decreasing everywhere. So because this is a vertical asymptote, I know that this is going to get close to this point, but never touch it. Notice this is concave up sort of a cup pointing up. At this point, it's going to change to concave down and get close, but never touch that asymptote. And now let's look at the last interval from 2 to infinity. From 2 to infinity, it's concave up and decreasing. So that means if it's concave up, it's going to be up here like this and obviously de Increasing. Now, you might be asking, how did I know it was going to go up there and not down here? Well, here, obviously, it's not going to get close to this, and this would be concave down and increasing. So I knew it had to be in that top section. So this is our first practice, and that is what the graph would look like. Let's do another practice. Here, this is going to be a little bit harder because, as you can see, there's not going to be any asymptotes. Um, and so it might be helpful to you to use several colors if you're into that kind of thing. So I know that I've got an intercept here at 0. That's for the x and for the y. 
My domain is everywhere, which means I don't have any asymptotes. And that's why this is a little bit harder because I don't have little sections that I can do. And then I do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. So I'm going to put that horizontal asymptote in at y equals zero. So far, so good. Now I'm going to use a different color for increasing, uh, I'm sorry, for min and max. So I'm gonna come back to these. So for the max, I'm going to go to one comma two. And for the min, I'm going to go to negative one, negative two. So I'm gonna leave that one unchecked for now because we don't really use those until we actually plot the graph. Now I'm gonna put in those points of concavity, I'm sorry, the point of inflection. So negative 1.5, negative 1.5, that's going to be a point of inflection where inflection changes. Here in the middle, that's also a point of inflection and 1.5, 1.5. So I have sort of the framework. I have the bones of this graph, and now I need to actually graph it. So how am I going to do that? So I've used everything except for obviously actually graphing. So let's think about the left side of the graph like we did before. So I'm going to decrease until I get to negative one. So I use yellow to indicate that that was a minimum. So I'm going to decrease until I get to there. But if you'll notice, I'm going to be concave down only until negative 1.5. So the fact that this is concave down and decreasing, and notice I have an asymptote here. So I know that I'm not going to be coming from up here because if I was coming from up there, then there's no reason to have an asymptote. So I'm going to start like this and I'm concave down and to here, that's the point of inflection. So from here, I'm gonna go from concave down to concave up. I'm still concave up, but now increasing. So again, increasing from uh, negative one to one. So I'm going to keep increasing. And now I'm going to um, decrease. And at 1.5, 1.5, I change concavity. So this was concave down. Now I'm concave up and again, using the horizontal asymptote. So this is what that graph would look like. This is, like I said, a little bit harder than what we did before. I'd like you to try this one on your own if you're feeling comfortable. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So press pause if you think you can do this on your own and then press play to see how you did. Again, feel free to use as many colors as you deem necessary. My first points will be negative one, zero, which is the x-intercept, zero, two, which is the y-intercept, and I'm gonna mark those off. I don't have a vertical asymptote, but I do have a slant asymptote. This one will be fun. My slant asymptote is an actual equation, y equals x. So that is my slant asymptote. We haven't graphed one like this before, but it should be fun. Um, so now I'm going to switch colors and I'm going to go ahead and do my min and my max. My max is at one, four, and my min is at two, three. And now I'm going to do my point of concavity, which is 0.25 comma three. That didn't do very well. And then 1.5 comma 3.5. All right, so now what do we got? Now we just have to do the graphing. So the domain is, domain is everything. So I don't have any vertical asymptotes, right? So now let's think about what's happening. It's increasing from negative infinity to one. So I'm gonna switch to blue. So from negative infinity to one, which is this point, right? I'm increasing. So now let's look at concavity. I, from negative infinity to 0.25, I'm concave up. So till I get to this point, I'm concave up. So here, concave up, concave up, increasing, increasing, increasing. Here, 
I switch to concave down until 1.5. Now I know this is a max. So I would concave down. I just hit that other point of inflection. And now I'm going to change concavity to concave up. And I'm still increasing now from 2 to infinity. Okay, so again, we decreased only from 1 to 2. So only in this little section right here, we were decreasing. So this is our final graph. Up next, we're going to basically repeat the process we just did, but we're going to do all of the math to find those attributes ourselves. So it's putting it all together, finding all of the intervals, all of the attributes, and then sketching the graph.